All right, guys. I told you we'd start getting some sets and stuff loaded. So I'm, I'm just going to do a basic dirt hole today. Um, I know it's probably the, the most used set there is out there, especially for folks or guys and gals just getting started. Um, so we don't really have any of those up on the site. And this is going to be very elementary, so some of you guys that are very tenured, you may not want to watch it. But I wanted to do something start to finish for those guys that are just looking to get started and need some help. Um, like on a dirt hole, I found this. I found this place here. It's already got a hole in the ground. It's got this root. This is going to be perfect to throw a set in. So, first thing I'll do most of the time is that hole's there. But I'll stick my driver, or I've got a dirt hole punch, or I've got a ground hole tool, whatever you want to use. Just put my driver in there. Just make that hole a little more, more noticeable to the predator and also if I'm making a dirt hole I'll usually like them flashy I like to make it look like you know something's been digging if you'll notice some guys and again I, there's no wrong or right way to do this this is just the way I do it I like to make my holes most mostly vertical that way it forces that predator that coyote that cat that fox whatever it is to come up here and look in that hole he's already smelled it and he sees it Whereas if you punch a big hole right here, he can stand back here and kind of look in that hole. It still works, but I think it's more effective if you, you know, if you get, the more you get your hole straight up and down. Um, so I'll make that hole and then I usually what I'll do, and I'll, I'll get more to this in a second, I'll take my driver and somewhere back in that hole, I'll just make a small hole there. And we'll talk about that in a minute. So then what I do, like any other set, all this talk about six inches back, two inches left, eight inches back, two inches right. I mean, you can do that, and some guys do and swear by it. I basically like to think like the dog or the cat that I'm trying to catch. Basically, I'm looking in that hole, my hands, I'm going to be back here somewhere if I'm looking at it. So I basically get in my mind what that dog or that animal is going to be doing. Punch me a little hole there. I'll tell you what I like to do with my holes. I like to basically lit, dig them like a bowl. tell you why it gives you a place of course I punch a hole in the bottom of mine for water but it gives you a place for your trap chain you probably can't tell but that hole it narrows as you get deeper MB 550, everybody has their brand of trap. It's never been in the ground. I'm not putting an anchor on it. And actually, I don't want to have to pull it out once I put it in. I'll take my punch. Just make me a small hole in the bottom of that. What that does, it gives me a place for my excess chain. And then when you're getting a bunch of moisture, it gives you a place for your, your water to set instead of in your trap bed. Now there should be an anchor on here. I would put it in there for you new guys. You're gonna drive, you're gonna drive that down in there. Once it gets to the desired depth, you're gonna pull up on it to make sure you set it. We're not gonna do all that because I'll have to dig that anchor out. But already without me packing or putting anything in there there's there's room under this trap there's a pocket under there and that i like that because of moisture heavy rains that's going to sit down under my trap and not on top of my trap 
And if you'll notice, and this is a, something that new guys, you have to keep this in mind. This trap can't move. I mean, if, if this predator comes up here to look in that hole and he steps on this jaw and that trap moves, he's gone. He's gonna dig you out or he's gonna know the gig's up and he's not gonna come back. Make sure, even if it takes you half an hour to put one set in, you're better off making, you know, two sets in four hours than you are making eight sets in four hours and they're all trash. So already, if you'll notice how tight that bed's dug, I can't move that thing. I mean, that thing is, is rock solid. I see some guys, they're just, well, this is rock solid. No, I'm literally, this, this thing is not gonna move. So I literally could cover it up now and be okay. But what I'll do is I'll take a little bit of my dirt I dug, just a little bit, you don't, especially in the winter time. Of course, I'm, you know, that's a whole different ball game, but just pack it in there just a little bit around your jaws. If you dig your trap bed tight, you don't have to do a whole lot of this. Now that trap is dead solid. If you'll notice, and this is, a, again, this is, this is personal preference. It works for me. It's not something that, that everybody does. My dog is away from the hole. Loose jaw is closest to the hole. And honestly, over the years I've seen, when I started turning my trap that way, my catch went up, I didn't have as many misses. And I honestly attribute that to, there's no movement on this fixed jaw back here. But it's not really a fixed jaw, but you know, it's got the dog side, so that's what's holding it down, the pressure's on that. That can't give at all. If your trap's bedded, that can't, good, that can't move at all. There are times, your trap bed may sink a little bit, it may move. There may be a little play in this loose jaw. You know, if they step on that loose jaw and it happens to roll the trap, or if they step over there and the, 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 front, of the, the front of their paw barely hits the edge of that pan, sometimes you result in a miss. If he steps over here and he steps on this dog and he screws around over here and he just never, he actually never steps on the pan, this trap won't fire. I would rather it not fire than it fire and miss. So when he's stepping around over here on this side, there's a good chance that your trap won't fire, but you won't have an educated dog and he'll be back. That's why I do it. I'm not telling you you should or you shouldn't, but it works for me. I also use a trapper's cap. Some folks aren't familiar with them. I don't use underalls. Um, the reason being in the past, I've used polyfill and underalls and you put them under there and you get moisture. We're in West Virginia, you get freeze, freeze thaw weather and that stuff will get moisture on it or in it and then it freezes under your trap. That's why I don't use it. I use a trapper's cap. Basically what it does for you new guys, it covers, it's, it's made the size of your pan. It fits directly over your pan. So then I take, I'm a peat moss guy. Again, personal preference. Some guys will sift back in the dirt already that they pulled out. I take a handful of peat moss and I start feeling down in the, down there where I said that pocket was. Clean that off the top of your cap. And you see it's starting to fill up. Put a little bit more in. Clean it off. Dead off the top of your cap and then pack it. And some folks say you can't pack peat, but that's not true. I keep this stuff in my attic in a five gallon bucket year round and it dries it out really good so it won't freeze on you in the winter. You new guys, you wanna pack that tight. So when that canine or that cat or whatever it is you're trapping steps over on that, it's not super spongy and soft and him feeling it under his feet that something's different. Cause it may make him wanna dig. Packing that real. I don't want a big bowl. You know the bowl where your trap is. Sometimes we'll make them step in the in the low part of the bowl. I don't like a big, huge bowl indention. Make sure you pack it in good. And while that trapper's kept on that trap, can't fire on you. Don't be afraid to pack it in there really good. 
pull that out. And right there is your pan. If you can zoom in on that, all you got there now is your pan. That's the free fall part. And what I do to finish it is I get me one more handful, about that big, and drop it dead on the pan. That's the only soft spot in that trap bed. Cut that ridge off so there's not big now. Then you're going, that's when you're going to take your, I take my the stuff you dug out of your bed. Start shifting that back in there. All right, there's no way that coyote knows that trap's there. But if you'll notice, it's a pretty big open-ended area. Here's your hole. You want him to step on your pan. A lot of times I'll take a stick and stick it in there. That way I know exactly where my pan is, but I can see a slight indention there. So what I'll do is I don't guide coats very heavy, but I'll take my loose stuff. And the idea is something's been digging here, something's living here. It don't take, you don't want to lay, and I'm not going to be one of them guys say you can't guide a coyote because you, lots of things you can do. But my buddy, my trap dog is here, my trap line dog is here with his ranger. I'll take a lot of this loose stuff. Now watch, this is important. You don't want to, you don't want to make this look unnatural to that coyote. But little things like this. This is natural here. If you notice, it's here. If you want to guide that coyote, you're going to want to take things like this, you know, this little clump of stuff. And what I'll do is I'll just kind of fix that out. And, and honestly, all that, just that little bit right there will keep that dog He'll come over top of that. He's gonna come right. What you want to do is you want to make him funnel, but you're not you're not guiding him with big sticks. So then I'll take another one. My pan's right there. Now I don't know if she can zoom in on that. But I promise when that dog comes up here to check this hole out, just this little bit of this and this little bit of this is going to guide that dog right through your trap pan. Last thing I'll show you before I leave is then now you would bait your hole, whatever you want to put in there. You get it, yada, yada, yada. A lot of times what I'll do is I use tongue depressors. I break it in two. I scoop it in my whatever my bait is, and I'll just drop the whole thing in there. And then sometimes if I've got liquid lure, if I'm using a liquid lure, a lot of times instead of pouring in there, I'll, I'll lube that up real good with that liquid lure. And if you remember when I started the video, I punched a little hole back here. I don't know if you can see it. Mm -hmm. There's a little hole right there. I would stick that back in that hole where I would take a small stick if I've got whatever my, my lure is and scoop it and stick it back in that hole. And what it does is it's kind of like an added bonus. If you get a major rainstorm and your hole happens to fill up with water or it caves in or whatever, those dogs can still find it. But when you've got that hole right there, it's almost above ground where the hole is. It'll keep working for you. And then if I was really working this set, I would take a, a little bit of lure and I would probably rub it on the bottom of that root and hit it with a, a squirt of urine. But anyway, that's all there is to it. You guys get out there and trap. That set will catch coyotes. It'll catch fox. It'll catch bobcat. And I bet you it'll catch possums. So get out there, put these sets in the ground. If you need help, send me a message. Send us a message, holler at us, call us, whatever it is you need to do. We'd love to help you. We'll catch you somewhere else down the line.